This is the Red All Over Show with me, Joe Beardsall, Al, Andy and Josh, as always, the dream team. Appreciate your likes and your comments. The questions tonight, we are talking about um, a link to a manager. We don't know if he's going to be our manager. Michael Duff has been linked to Barnsley. Apparently, we've uh, approached um, Cheltenham Town for him. So let us know in the comments. What do you think, Reds? A lot of people have been calling for um, you know, a coach who knows the leagues, knows League One. Um, so I think it, it, you know League Two as well fit that bracket around those uh, English leagues and obviously someone who's got experience playing in, in England as well. Uh, so let us know what you think to that. We're going to be asking the question after the changes at the top in the boardroom. Um, are you renewing now? Season has it changed your mind? Are you getting your season ticket or not? What's your thoughts? How how's your stance changed? Some fans I've been talking to on Twitter today still not convinced. Still want to see action. I've seen many others, um, you know, supporters of the show as well and, and different fans on Twitter saying, actually, you know what, now I am going to renew. It has changed my mind. I've seen the comments made by uh, Nirav and uh, the new guys at the top and, and decided, actually, that's convinced me that, you know, I want to renew and I want to support the lads next season with a season ticket. Um, so let us know if you're renewing. And we're also going to do a bit of a mini season review, talk about the retain list, loads of stuff going up on tonight's show. Please get involved in the comments as always really helps the show. We massively appreciate it uh, to uh, see your comments and interact with you. You know, we love to to chat to you afterwards. So please get in there. Um, Gents, let's kick it off with a bit of a breaking news. Um, This has come from Gloucestershire Live. Um, They're reporting that Barnsley have made an approach for um, Cheltenham Towns manager, Michael Duff. Uh, what are we reckoning to this then, Al? Um, fans have been saying that they want someone who knows English leagues. Well, he played for Burnley, to my understanding. I think he were in Burnley's youth set up for a bit, uh, from what I've been reading in the last five minutes of my mega research, and uh, done a good job at Cheltenham Town, uh, by all accounts, from what I can understand. I couldn't inform him, he's a decent manager, ex-Northern Ireland international as well, defender. Uh, I think... If we are going for him, we're not going for the foreign coach, although he's from Northern Ireland. People might say still for him, but he's, he's, oh. he's an experience in League One, aren't he? Uh, and and end of the day, that's what we've been asking for. We're wanting a coach who can understand the English lower divisions, and he's got that uh, uh, in himself, hasn't he? And uh, that's where Ben Williams went as well to Cheltenham Town. And also, if Martin, as I said, Martin is on the coaching staff, uh, he came from Cheltenham Town as well. So we have, we, we've got links, haven't we? So let's see where it goes. Gabriel Sutton has put it out there that uh, all that they're looking for, he don't think it's a good good move for him, Gab, but uh, who knows? Uh, it, it is a big ask to come in uh, to our club, which is changing in-house as well, from top to bottom, isn't it? So... Uh, let's see. Um, it's the first I've heard of a coach being mentioned. Well, like just to clarify, Reds, we don't know. This is not saying that he's going to be the next head coach. He could very much turn us down. Cheltenham could turn us down. It's apparently, you know, just been reported at the moment that we have approached him. Like I said, Gloucester's alive. I've said that. Um, Josh, um, I'm not going to pretend that this is me and Al have done all this research in the last five minutes and done it, sorry, in the last three hours, we've done it in about five minutes. Uh, but it did say on the on the piece that he'd won 84 with Cheltenham as the gaffer, drew 55, lost 63. By all accounts, that's a decent record. Um, we will try to get more information on him if, if things seem to develop and he is appointed. What, what's your initial thoughts, though? I think it's really important this season that we do actually um, have a manager who does know the leagues and obviously... Managed Cheltenham to the league title um, in League Two and then moving forward into League One. He's built them into a, a pretty mid table, solid side. I think he led them to the highest ever finish in League One as well last season, which was 15. So he's on a strong up curve, he's on a strong uh, a strong trajectory of them. And from what from what I've seen of him, he seems like he fits the model of what we'd want in a coach from what we've had previously. He's young, he's only 44, so I think relatively young for a for a coach anyway, and then he also plays 3-5-2, which obviously fits into what Val and Poya flirt, flirt with that idea. So I think the similarities there drawn from what we've had previously, um, and it seems on face value that it fit with the style. Um, it just depends on, I think it should be more down to him than us, to be honest, if he wants to come to us rather than um, us approaching him. Yeah, I mean, it is a big decision for him. Whether if you know if we do appro- if we have approached as it's been reported, and 
and he gets that chance to come, it's it's up to him, isn't it? But uh, Andy definitely fits the the box of a lot of Reds fans have been calling for in terms of someone who knows the knows the league. You know, there's been a lot of complaints. <laughs> we've well, we've complained as well about you know having coaches who've never played in England or never managed in England and that being maybe one of the reasons we've struggled. Uh, obviously, there's been examples where that's not been the case, where we've had coaches who have come in and in that situation and done well for us. But um, it was definitely something a lot of fans wanted, wasn't it? Someone who's who's going to know the league. I know very little about him, apart from what you three are now saying, because I've, I've, not, I've not seen this news. I've only just... Only just come on, mate, and... keep up. It's been out 40 minutes. Well... Oh. You know, well, says you, says you, it's flipping tea time. It's five, just after five o'clock and you've got lager in your hand. So, you know, you started early. Flipping egg. You know, you well, what this five, is, what's wrong with that? It's driven him to drink. We're so on coffee. We're, we're on, and he's on our stuff. Beards are. It's been a long, been a long season for him, Al. It's, been it's a, a shandy. Season. It's a shandy. Come on. Oh, guys. yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Try telling, yeah, try telling everybody that it's shandy. Yeah. We all believe that. Yeah, go on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, see. Um, yeah, everybody's been wanting uh, a, a manager, not necessarily an English manager, uh, you know, British manager, but a manager that knows the um, knows the English leagues. Um, but, you know, booking around, there's a load of uh, British managers that know the English leagues that are rubbish. You know, don't, just because they know the leagues don't mean that they're any good. Um, if he's got, he's got them up and, uh, you know, he's, he's settled them down in, in League One, so he's not rubbish, is he? Whether he'll take us on or not, I don't, I don't know. I think Gabe Sutton is, said it's not a good move for him. It wouldn't be a good move, or it would be yeah. a good move. But is that based on him taking it, or is that based on us? Who is it not a good move know. for? Is it a good move for it? Were you meaning? No, he said, him, it, he said it'd be a bad move for Michael Duff to come yeah. to. He's dead to me now, then Gabriel <laughs> Sutton. That, that, well, that, him on this that. show again. He's dead. Mm-hmm. You know, when he wants me to go on his show ever again, well, he can do one, can't he? If that's the way he's going to talk, putting our club down, it's a. Flipping egg. How low is he sinking? You know, sinking lower than us, lower he than a snake. Selling belly, it, and I'm not having he it. He's selling the football club, shouldn't he? Should be selling it. He, he needs sorting out. He's, well, he supports Birmingham City. What do you expect? Um, we'll, we'll see, won't we? If it's if it's true and um, it's what we want and it's what he wants, it, maybe it'll work out well. It's it's nice to see that we're linked with English managers. Um, or you know, you know, British based managers put it that way. I'm going to say, I'm not sure about Ireland, Northern yeah. Ireland qualifies him as being a foreigner, Alan. We've got yeah, to get to to Great Ireland. Britain and Northern Ireland, Alan. It's We've the got United to Kingdom, the Alan. First. You know, first. Eh? You know, people were shouting it past for Alex Neil and he's Scottish. I'm not saying, oh, he's a foreigner. You know, it's all part of the same flipping United Kingdom, Al. Flipping egg. Flipping egg, Alan. Best of both worlds. Somebody that knows the English league and a foreigner. Is that what you're trying to say, Al? <laughs> no comment. So we've got, we've got, we've got the balance right then, I suppose. Uh, Cheltenham Town fans, you might not watch the show, you might not watch, you might not be watching right now, but if you are, please comment. Let us know what you think to the idea of Michael leaving, and give us any information you can if you if you don't mind, because we are, like I said, coming in pretty blind here. Uh, just five minutes uh, of, of, of sort of research. Um, moving on, guys. Season tickets, what are we thinking? Uh, obviously, probably a slightly biased debate with us four here, because I know all of us lot um, have renewed for us since. Um, but um, Andy, can you understand there's still quite a lot, quite a few fans, you know? Um, well, firstly, there's 6,000 already renewed. That's been announced by the club and fair play to the club. They've also donated six six k with those 6,000 to grassroots football in Barnsley, which I think is brilliant. Um, but can you understand there are some fans who are still like, okay, seeing signs of things oh, moving, yeah. but actually I'm going to wait till I see actual action before I, before I commit. Yeah, I mean, I renewed mine or, or our four a number of weeks ago because, you know, we, we were fully behind Paul Conway. You know, just, <laughs> can, can, I, can I just make it clear? That's a joke. Just in case anybody doesn't know, that's called banter. So, you know, sort your sense out if you think it's anything other than banter. The problem um, is there'll be like 20 people who've just stopped it there and then commented, well, so too late now. Don't need to get all the sense of it. If they can't take a bit of humour, there's somewhere wrong with him. You're not allowed to laugh, Joe. You're not allowed to have a bit of humour or a laugh. You know, I don't know. Yeah, I think it's I think it's perfectly all right. There's been a lot of... I think there's been a lot of upset throughout the season that's been quite reasonably justified and rightly justified. And I'm not going to criticise anybody that's not sure about... Um, 
about not wanting to renew the season ticket or or wanting to or thinking twice or three times about it. That's entirely it's entirely up to them. Um, but it's gratifying to know that there's three thousand uh, that the six thousand three thousand that the six thousand tickets sold already. So that that that's a positive thing. I think it's a really positive move on behalf of the uh, on behalf of the new board that there's going to be the meeting before you know having extended the deadline that people are going to get a chance to hear a little bit more because it were all such big news last week um, about you know the, the the shenanigans or a new board and um, you know all, all that and, and and he said changes in ownership so I don't quite know yet what that means um, I, I'm glad that they've extended it because I, I saw. When it was first announced, there were a lot of people that, uh, you know, since it was going to run out a couple of days ago on the Monday, they were saying, oh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Do I, do I take a leap of faith because it's a change of board? Do, do I not? I, I don't know what to do. They ought to extend it. I don't know. And they've done the right thing, in my view, that they've extended it. So the people that aren't sure um, and, and are wavering one way or the other, not you know, sitting on the fence, if you like, just like you, Joe, really, because you sit on fence an awful lot, Um then it gives them, it gives them, yeah, I know. It gives That's them positive, ch- apparently. It, it, it's a positive move by, by the new board to give people that are, are not sure what to do chance to think a bit more, see a bit more, hear a bit more, and to be able to make a decision. And if they make a decision to renew, that's grand. If they choose not to, that is entirely a matter for them. And I, I, I wouldn't criticise them at all for it. The ones that, no matter what, aren't going to renew... Again, that's entirely up to them, you know, and good luck to them. You know, I, I personally don't want to go shopping on a Saturday afternoon. But, you know, we're all we're all different, aren't we? I wouldn't criticise anybody. Although, you know, there are those that do. I wouldn't criticise anybody for making a decision one way or the other. Well done to the board is all I'd say. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, like, like we said, whether you a season ticket or not, some people will go and support the team, but not buy a season ticket because of work or whatever mm. other commitments, and go to more away games than others. And you know, so we're not saying in any way that you not buying a season ticket means you're less of a fan in any way. And we've said that on multiple shows. So just to clarify that, um, Josh, I mean, the narrative that the words that have been spoken since the announcement uh, around the changes at the top have been very, very powerful. I think it's fair to say. I'm just having a look at what um, Nirav uh, said. Um, I'm right in saying new chairman now. Has that been mentioned? Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, yeah. Um, I can't pronounce his second name yet, so you have to forgive Parkeet. me. I think Paki, yeah. So Nirav Paki, um, said in his statement around you know, talking about the disappointment of fans and broken relationships and the lost trust, and how it's going to take time to rebuild that with, with us as the fan base. Um, but you know, he said that he'd like to assure us that the club are doing everything they can to, um, you know, to improve. And as a board, he says, we will live by our Latin motto, which is um, the Spectre Agenda, let us be judged by our acts or actions, as we all know, is the, is the town's motto. Um, and then went on to, you know, talk about, um, you know, the fact that he's going to meet with fans uh, on the 27th at a fan forum. So get that. And then he sits in direct he always sits with a red and white scarf on. Yeah, well, it sounds to me, from what I'm hearing, I'm hearing good things. I don't know him, uh, so I can't comment too far, but the people who do know him seem to suggest he's uh, very much committed and, and has, has fallen in love with the club to an extent. So that is that is a good sign, because we said on the last show uh, that we did on, on the board when, when things changed, that it's really just about having someone who cares and people who care at the top, and I think that really matters to me. Josh, you haven't had a chance to say anything on this because you, you weren't with us when we did the board what uh, board show after Conway and everything that went off with that. Um what were your thoughts and how are you feeling now? Um, I do think the initial statement which the club did put out, probably it was a positive in that we knew that Chin Lee and Paul Conway had no further sort, sort of involvement in the cl- uh, with, with the club. But I do think it also posed more questions in that it's kind of, I still don't think we fully understand what it actually means to the club moving forward. It is kind of ambiguous because it, it's it's just not set in stone in a way as well. Um, and I think um, it's a it's a positive start as well with the let the, the open letter which uh, Nira have sent out. I think that it's a positive first step. But again, I can see why people has have reservations buying season tickets and things because ultimately that's that's all well and good. But it needs to be backed up then by by the actual actions of right. We've seen last season right now. You need to go and prove to us that you've made 
that you've seen and taken on board what fans have been saying and they need to put into action. And obviously with this rumour of Michael Duff, that would be an acknowledgement that, yeah, we didn't get the player one right. We didn't get Michael Shop right. Let's play it maybe to say it's safe in a way by appointing an English manager who knows the league and it's less of a gamble that they're not going to understand like how English foot, foot, football is kind of played. And I think it's just less of a gamble and it's a lot more, it's what fans want. And I think that will instill confidence if we can appoint someone like that. I think it will make fans think, right, okay, the board have acknowledged that we've, and that Nirav has got a clear idea and plan of what we want to do and what, what, what the identity of the club is and things like that. But for me at the minute, all this is just, it's just words. And I do think we need, we need the actions to back it up, which is going to take time to put these actions into place. It's going to take time to rebuild these relationships. But it's a very, very small first step, but it's a, at least it's a first step in a positive direction. Mm, and it's going to be difficult, isn't it? Because it's not a case of a quick fix. And I suppose we're talking about the season ticket debate. Do you do you buy a season ticket, or should we call it? You know, do you support the club next season? Is probably the, the better way to put it. Um, but it's a kind of chicken and the egg situation for the board because we're going to have to sell a lot of players. We're going to need the support of as many fans as possible to try and bounce back. So I guess there's limitations on what we can do without that support. Versus we need action now so that fans will support the club. Yeah, I think you're right. I think the chicken egg analogy is like bang on in a way because the club are like, look, we've said this, come and support us, but supporters are like, well, you've not shown us anything. All well, you've done is send a letter out, which is perfect PR and public relations. It's 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 a perfect way to make you think, all oh, right, okay, we're going to be in the right direction, but you do actually need to show it to fans as well because Paul Conway could have gone and wrote that and sent it out to everyone and everyone would have been like, well, you've not done anything from last season. There's been no change. I think it is the matches that actually needs to be put into place and then we can start to see the progression and see the direction in which the club's going, which if you look at what's happened since, Nero's come and taken accountability for last season, which is all, 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 all really what we wanted was Paul Conway or Shin Lee to come out and say, look, we've got it kind of wrong. We'll work on it and fix it and then prove it after. And I think it's... a uh, it's a positive sign on Nero's behalf that he's come out and took, he's taken that accountability when it wasn't necessarily his, his fault. Or it wasn't his fault in my eyes. It was someone else's fault. And he's come and taken that accountability and gone, right, look, next season, we're going to be better. And now it's just a case of proving that we will be better. He does sound like a very strong leader from from what he said so far. But like you said, Josh, actions will be, will be key. I mean, for me personally, I just think like, um, and hopefully this will get clarified. I just want to know like what's happening with the Paul Conway Shen Lee situation. Slightly controversially, I'm not that bothered if Shen Lee still got stake in the club but isn't in the boardroom because I don't know how involved he was anyway. I mean, maybe he was, but to me, it, it seemed like Paul Conway was the one that majority of fans were probably more. I think it's fair to say upset with and frustrated and angry with. So, like, if he's out of the picture altogether, but Shen's still slightly in, as long as it's not going to cause disruption from the top, which then leaks out into the pitch and in the decision making, I'm I'm happy with that. So, I want some clarity on on that and the fact that everybody in the top is all together now, and it does appear like that's the case. Um, so it'd be good to get some answers, but I'm sure we will as we we get into the 27th, which is the uh, the fan forum, and obviously um, Nirav is going to be talking, chatting to the media as well. Um, I disagree a bit with you, Joe. Really, that I, I'm bothered. You know, they've oh, yeah. been okay. Fair enough. They've been, they've been voted. They've been voted off the board for what for for whatever reason. There's been a takeover of some sort. Um, what what they need to do now? They, they need to get the sends off. You know, they, they they've been there. They've not said a flipping word all season. You know, they, they've they've been a. Uh, it really saddens me that they've really let down, let everybody down, and they've let fan be against fan. There's a whole host of things that they've done. And just one example, it's not it's not the only one, there's loads of examples, but just one example for me personally, and just 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 think about it for a second. The three quarters of a million that were in the club that were taken out of the club accounts and given to the or, or, you know transferred to the crimes. There's all we know is that that's what's happened. Yet there's theories, there's been a theory that has then gradually become a fact. And I don't know if it's a fact to my knowledge, it's just a theory that that money which is our money that we put in the club was used for them to buy the club off the crimes. And that's, that's got traction. Everybody thinks not a penny more. They've used our money to buy the club for themselves. And that money, we're not giving them any more money to buy the club even more. I don't know if that's true or not that. I don't think, unless you tell me differently, I don't think that's a fact. 
I think that's become a fact. Well, yeah, I mean, we certainly to have to be careful as well, Andy, in terms no, of, of, of leading so. things like that. I'm, so, I'm not. Um, yeah. No, no, no. But that's a theory. That's why I'm saying it, Joe. That's a theory. I mean, I didn't, I didn't say anything, lads, because I want to show, but we've got Gene back on now. What's yeah. got to be ratified by our EFL? We've got Julian Key on the board. What's got to be ratified? Gene's Barnsley through and through. That's what I said on some of our shows. Conway and Co. didn't understand what Barnsley Football Club means to us as supporters. But under Conway and Co., we, were, we weren't supporters or fans. As I said before, to them, we were just customers of their business, what they were holding. It wasn't our football club. I feel what's happening now is, in a rightful way, we're on course to get our football club back. There's still bridges to be built, like Josh has said. It's not, I can put it, Clear running water at the moment. There's still some murkiness there. But we're on the right direction. They understand the football club. They understand the town. They understand what football means to us as fans now and supporters. If they give everything, we'll support them. And I think that's what's coming back. And we've got to be understanding. Well, we hope so, Al. We hope right? so. Well, yeah. We they've, so. got to, they've got yeah. to. That's what they've got to take into account. And I think that... Is it Nareev? I think I think he's on the right tracks. Nareev, yeah. Uh, Nareev, he's got everything, as I said, what he understands. I'll go back uh, on about Khaled as well. He's been out to listen to fans and what fans are saying and took everything on board. And I think in the long term, it'll be beneficial for us as a football club to move forward. Yeah, I think what just going back to what you were saying, Andy, I think the, the thing is, and we've said it many times on this show as well, as when you don't communicate openly, and this is not a criticism of the football club because Khalid, like we've said, has been open communication. We've had communication with the club a, a, a lot recently, but um, in terms of Paul Conway, Shen Lee particularly, when you don't communicate, it leaves space for the rumour mills to flow. When you don't yeah. clarify things, it leaves openness for people to debate. Is this true? Could this be the case? Often when you have the full perspective and you actually hear from them people and they come out and speak to you, and we've said on this show many times earlier in the season, they are welcome to come on this show and give their opinion. We we, we offered that out. Um, like you would be able to fill in those gaps and then people will go, okay, actually I was wrong. That, you know, that suggestion was incorrect. And that's that's one of the biggest problems is because of the lack of communication, this it's quite obvious and understandable why fans just go, Well, you don't care and you're not bothered. And maybe the reality is that they're not. And it's good. I'm just glad it's that they're created, moving on. It's created an awful atmosphere of fans against fans throughout the season. And it's you know, I, I'm not, not happy with fans being against fans and everybody calling everybody out and all that. But the bottom line is they could have clarified what it was. If it was the theory that's been put, one of the theories that's been put forward, and they did do that, then whether it's legal or not, I've no idea. It don't feel, and I use the word feel, it don't feel moral to me. If it was something else, I would, I'd just like to know, and I think they could easily have explained to put people's minds at rest. It was the, you know, the... The, the acting CEO, when all this was, they, they could have said, they could have just said, and their silence. We said it so many times. The silence is deafening, and it creates all sorts of. If there's gaps, they get filled in. You know, we all fill them in, and you know, you can fill them in rightly or you can fill them in wrongly. And, and it's, speculation, I, I counter it's, speculation, isn't it? And yeah. Again. Anyway, I'm gonna move. We're gonna move the conversation yeah. on because we want to focus on uh, retain list, which we're expecting will be out. Later this week, hopefully it's not come out while we've been recording this show. Just for retain, um, but well, I'll let you know. I'll by end of week, mate. Tyke Stevie have put a bid in. Got to consider it, mate. You know we've offered you a contract extension. We'll see what happens. But as you can see there, uh, doing talks. Oh, behind I my put back that on because this is about fans being with fans at that at that football match that that you two played. That you scored your penalty, Joe, and him. He were blowing him. He were blowing and limping off that Josh. Giving it large throughout the football all season, what he's going to do? Uh, and that's what do. hard work. Well, like, it off. It it was how many times like, Joe were running off, off that like pitch. A kid. I played. You know, I, must have played I must have played. ninety-three percent of that game. Joe played about half at most. To be fair, uh, though, well, Richard well, said, well, look, Richard that's said another to theory, me, look, Joe, look, Joe, look, Joe, look, Joe. We want to give him a chance, so we're going to bring you off. We want to give him a chance, so we're going to just give you half a game. So that behind me, look at the dugout, the dream team. You know, we're we're our club for for a club our size, we're awash with different shows of different sorts. Us Tags TV, you know, in the red corner, Taylor at um, 
at Barnsley on to Red's report. Don't forget, I'm don't forget say open down, but they right. can no, no, no. What you've, they you've say got, about me. You've got to say open down because they, they've warned me because I forgot to mention them last time we did a little plug for the other Barnsley channels. They said they've got some footage on me that they're saving for a rainy day. Gallid! Gallid! Well yeah, done, like the Warriors. Yeah. And, well, and well done to uh, to Barnes, uh, to Tyke's blog as well, um, Ian, because um, I forgot to mention him as well. So go on, Andy, what were you saying? We we blessed with different shows. You know, the Luke Roby did really well with Tyke's TV. I'd watched it for a few years. He packed in, and you know, for, for his for his right reasons, and we talked to him about it, and he did it all for the right reasons for him. Neil stuck it on a steady start for him, and he's grown and grown and grown, and. That, that it's what it's all about. You know, it's not about one against the other. We're all different shows. We have different strengths, different weaknesses, and where have you across across the board. But we're all Barnsley fans, and I don't like it when people try and say that. Oh, you know, there's competition, the rivals. I don't personally feel that I'm a rival with any of them. You know, t- uh, Taylor from ta- uh, from um, Barnsley on tour has been on our show. He's been on Tax TV. Andy Gage doing his own. He's been on. Ta- you know, it's it's. We're all the thing is, we're massively, like, we're massively like blessed. Those. We're massively blessed as a club of our size to have so many people who just give up the free time to do stuff because they just love the club, to raise the profile of the club, to to share content, to create content, and I think it's amazing. So, like I've said before, I give loads of praise to everybody who does <laughs> that. Um, Andy, we're running out of time though, mate. So I need to move on because we're not going to get your uh, retain li- retain list and stats. Uh, we've only got seven minutes left. <laughs> um, so. Uh, I'm going to do a quick fire. Do you want to do stats first? Go on, we'll stick them on screen. Let me know what are the stats for this season. Well, it's a, it's a, I've tried to count them, Joe, but you know, I, I had to take my shoes and socks off and all, so, so that made it difficult. I think not counting this one, I'm pretty sure it's near damn it that we've done 174, 174 shows this season, which is a lot. Plumbing X. Which in, in the actual show, so actually like we are now, live on screen, which is a frightening thought for a lot of people, me included, 70, uh, 61 hours worth of us actually being, well, at least one of us being actually on screen. That's over that, 300 that, hours of editing. <laughs> frightening, isn't it? Yeah, I know. I know. That production I know. That's putting a shift in, Josh, lad. That's putting a shift oh. in. And he has. I'm not even going oh, to talk Eli, about it. Oh, It takes about 10 minutes to edit these. Anyone who thinks he's taking hours to do it, it takes about 10 minutes. You top and tail it and export it. It's easy as well. All this three hours. Uh, it does if you don't do it right, like mate. It's a lie. It it's right. a lie. Oh, oh, did you, didn't, didn't you forget Twitter handles of a week? I don't think I've ever done that when I've uploaded oh, one, gee, by oh, the way. Yeah, we said moving on anyway. Go on, Andy. What else you got on for the, us? Uh, to guess, and I've looked through them all because I've got no better to do. On the main shows, which it incorporates a whole load of things, doesn't it? You know, there's reaction shows, there's preview shows, there's the Christmas show, the live shows, opposition fan shows, all that lot. You did a couple of two or three match day blogs. On the main show, 48 different people were on that. And on the fan camps, and not, to, not us, not us, just on the fan camps, there were 50 different fans on the fan camp throughout the season, which is a phenomenal amount. And if you think on the on the what's it on the uh, opposition show, we had eighteen different fans on it. So I've got it here. We've got you know we, we've had a few of them. You know we've had a lot of them. We've had a load of people, absolutely load and loads of people. And I'll tell you, we've had Yanis. We're a star. He were from Fulham. What we're a star. We've had Ryan Eldred a couple of times, two or three times from Blackburn Rovers. He were a an absolute star. Mr. Daw from Forest. Go on, Forest, next week. Johnny from Shorenville, Sheffield United. Not be happy this morning, but Daw will be. We've had Dana that I've not had the pleasure of talking to from, from Middlesbrough. Windle, Ryan Windle from Huddersfield. Lewis from West Brom. Taylor from Barrow. Um, Gabe Sutton from Birmingham. Sam from Bournemouth. He were good, weren't you, Sam? Oh, Annie from, where was he? Annie from Bristol City. Robert from Black. Paul, all the way from Reading, a whole load of people, 18 different people from opposition views. We're great at that. We've also had Doug O'Kane on, the starter of the Chronicle, Doug O'Kane, Tony Carlson, all the way from sunny Sweden. We've had Ben Lockwood and Paul Gallagher from whichever way you want to call it, from Supporters Trust or BBS Fans Forum, whatever you want. Darren from Western Park, what a star he is, Darren. And then, of course, we've had Khaled on when you interviewed him a few times, Joe. Andy Clark and Barry Murphy at our recent live event. So it's all good. It's all good stuff. It's all good. It's been 
It's been emotional, Joe. It's been it emotional. Has. It's been very emotional. And do you know what, Reds? That's what it's all about for us. That's what we want. It's not just about us four sat here uh, chatting rubbish. It's about getting everybody involved. And um, we want to just say we're planning in summer. We want to make it bigger and better next season. I can't thank you enough to the to the local Barnsley businesses who support the channel, and particularly to the to the uh, guys in our supporters club who pays a few quid each month. We couldn't do the show without you guys. Like that few quid pays for the video editing, pays for all the equipment, pays for everything we're trying to do uh, in terms of merch and all that sort of stuff just to build the show and raise the profile of the club. So if you want to get involved, just drop us a message. Uh, I'll put the supporters club on screen as always if you want to join that. And we are going to try and get more fans on next season. We want to break that record of 40, 49, were it? Was it 49? 50. 50. I remember all this for more next season. season. 48 on the main show, as well as us, us four Muppets, well, your three Muppets and me. We, um, you know, Jane, Jane Ogley's been on loads of times. Craig's Wood's been on recently. We've had Rob Cooper. Rob Cooper's been on a number of times. Simon Fulton's been on a number of times. So if I've missed anybody else, I'm sorry. Hey. Yeah. Um, uh, Tracy. Yeah, Tracy. Darling. Um, we're gonna be yeah. what we're gonna be doing is in the summer. I'm gonna organise for us all to go for a pint um, somewhere in oh. town. So I'll uh, I'll mention that on one of the future shows. And if you want to get more involved, you can come down. It'll be because uh, if this is gonna grow and get you know get better and continue to to expand, we need more fans involved. Uh, so you know we need more support in terms of you know obviously finances, but we need more support in terms of people being able to volunteer the time to do the shows or you know maybe do some editing or whatever it is, social media, whatever it is. So if you want to get more involved in Red All Over, I'll let you know when that date's going to be confirmed over the summer and we can see what we can do for next season. Be great to have well, you. I'm not going about all the shows we've been on, but we've been so lucky to be invited on loads and loads of other shows, all four of us at different at, at different things. I think me for comedy value, particularly with uh we read you name dropping. But- no, 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 no. You can all you can all do it better than me. You know, you can all do that better than me. But there are a few, there are a few in our background that have done some videoing. So Alex Francis has been superb with some of the camera work, particularly after matches. Um, you know, so has my son Jonathan. He's done some written all. Um, Catherine, your fiance, Joe, if you've not forgotten her. She's done a lot of work behind the scenes for which we're extremely grateful. And last but definitely least. My brother, who did the video in of one show when we lost the tour to Blackburn, and he keeps he keeps saying that's had the most views all 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 season, and that's down that's down to my camera work. It isn't. Is it that isn't. our hours? Our hours? No. It is our. It I'll, is I'll have to have a word all with down to him. And of course, it is. Pick Kate up. I'll have to pop into his shoe shop and have a word with Howard. The actual most views we got this season, I think, if I'm right, was Nottingham Forest when we lost Steve Cooper's first game. Um, and Andy basically came out after the show and went, "Yeah, Marcus shot me to go." <laughs> so, so well, I think I it was me. I'm not surprised. I, that was can I tell you news. this, Joe? I, I know time's running out, and you might have to pour a bit. More. Can I ask you this? Smithy is getting down with the kids because he keeps saying that we're content creators now. Content oh, creators. We are. That's true. I, I didn't even know that that were a word or a, a phrase, but it is. Mister Moshu says. I'm a social media influencer. Now, I don't think that's Get true, but shirt, I'm going to give you a couple of facts, Joe. Well, you ain't got time. Gonna... We've got less than a minute, mate. So well, let's, I'll let's do it. Do no correlation, up. Joe. Start at season, I wore this shirt. Throughout the season, thousands wore this shirt at Oakwell. Don't know what it's about. Is it me? Don't know. Influence. What can we say? Uh, right, we're out of time for a retaining list. We'll do it when it comes out. We'll chat about it later this week if it's out. See you later. You read. 63 years. <laughs> In a good way or a bad way, Al. No comment. (laughs) 